Ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, I'm doing a little departure from the Star Wars and Star Trek Metal Earth kits that I've been doing, and I have actual request from someone who wanted me to do the Metal Earth steam locomotive. So I thought, hey, sure, why not? Um, I've kind of finished up the ones that I really wanted to build, and this looks interesting. I thought I would give it a shot. Ultimately, yeah, I'd like to put together a lot of different Metal Earth kits. It's just a matter of time and money, but I'll give this one a shot. So, let's open this up and see what we're dealing with. All right. I believe this is two sheets. Yes, it is. Got your usual two sheets. Let's put them off to the side and peek at the instructions. And standard procedure. You've got a little bit about the needle nose pliers and the tabs. Circles mean fold over, triangles mean twist, 90 degrees. A little bit about folding and inserting the tabs. And then you just jump right into building the kit. And you know the part numbers, they kind of lead you through with the arrows. Although some of these kits can be a little confusing. You've got two pages. So let's get started and see, oh, and of course, you have the diagram of the two sheets that you have and all the parts are labeled. So let's start putting together. Tools I used for this kit have your Fascinations tool kit with the flat nose pliers, needle nose, and the clippers. We have the usual pair of tweezers. This is the main thing you need to do these kits. You can possibly do it with just a pair of tweezers. The other tools are helpful though. I have a couple of other needle nose pliers that came in handy. These get into, these forceps get into places a little bit tighter than the metal earth ones. And this is a new set of round end pliers that help for shaping curves. Also, for shaping curves, dowel rods, or any other round object that you can use to curl things around. I have a dentist pick, or dentist type pick that I use for getting into tight areas, and sometimes a pocket knife is helpful for bending things over. I realized from the first piece of this kit, I did not have the right size object to bend the main body or tank around to shape it. Took a break, ran to the hardware store, and picked up a half inch dowel rod that worked perfect. As is true with all of these kits, it takes time and small adjustments to get the parts to fit together. The parts rarely ever fit together the first time. I used a new round nose plier set that I picked up recently. They seem to be great for shaping curves. Some of the pieces are so tiny that I use pliers to carefully set them in place. Closing the tabs on rounded parts can be quite tricky. You sometimes have to use one tool to hold the part firmly while using another to bend it over or bend the tab over. Other times you can bend the tab part way over and crimp it shut with pliers.
I often use my fingernails to bend over tabs. I mistakenly did a couple of things out of order from the directions, but it didn't matter, the parts weren't related, so it came together just fine. It took me a while to work out the best way to round the wheels. I tried curving the pieces around and bending up the tab, and then catching the tab on the slot, trying to pinch the tab down. This had mixed results. I finally remembered that I had done wheels several kits back, and at that time, I would put the wheels through the slot, bend it halfway with tweezers, and then use the dowel rod to roll the part on the table. That would almost always bend the tab over nice and clean. Just make sure you're rolling it the right way. When attaching the wheels, I suggest inserting the bottom two tabs first. I started at the top and had a very difficult time getting the bottom tabs in their respective slots instead of in the holes between the spokes. Placing the tabs in the bottom slots first, then lining up the top two was much easier. When using a dowel rod or a pin to form the wheels, it helps to use something that is a tad smaller than the final wheel. That way you can get the shape and still have a little room to attach and bend the tabs over. You'll have a slightly oblong shape, but that's easy to correct. And it did not take long for my fingers to begin hurting from all of those tabs. When attaching the side wheels to the center piece that holds it together, most of the tabs come out right in the middle of the larger wheels, and they're easy to access and twist. There are a few inside the smaller wheels, and they're off-center, so if there's very little room to get in with tweezers or pliers, I use the dental pick to bend those tabs over. Now to place all 14 outer wheels on. I apologize for getting off camera. There was a lot of interruptions the day I built this kit and a surprise guest, an inquisitive five-year-old. I believe the camera ended up tampered with without my knowing it.
I edit my videos down so they are not just the full two to three hours it takes to build the kit. I leave out parts where I study the instructions, clip parts free, and sometimes I leave out the struggles. So if this video makes it look very easy, it can be challenging. Be patient and take your time. The parts do not just automatically fit together and it can take time to adjust them to fit. I did make a few mistakes and I had to correct them. I had to spread the bottom of the train tank a bit to get the wheel assembly in and attached. Attaching the larger parts is always a challenge and this was no exception. I had no trouble inserting the tabs on one side, but the other side was very stubborn. I fought with it for quite a while and even after assembling it and pushing over the tabs, two of them popped back loose. The front section is held on by two tabs that attach to the rails on either side of the tank. It was quite challenging to hold the part in place and hold the rail down and twist the tab. Could have used an extra hand, but I did eventually manage to attach it, although rather loosely. The good news is the large flat side pieces that attach a little later also attach to the front section, which secures it in place. I had to open up the back section to fit in another piece and it would have been nice if the instructions could have warned me about that earlier before I closed it and bent the tabs. And after I was done assembling the model, I spent several minutes straightening out little thin parts that were unintentionally bent while handling the model. There we go, the Metal Earth steam locomotive. This was a fun and challenging build. It wasn't quite as easy as I expected, but I kind of knew better than get my expectations set too hard. The underside is a little warp here and there. When you first start, you put these thin side trim pieces on and it's very hard not to squish and twist them as you're putting on the other pieces. And getting this bottom on was a lot of fun and at one point something slipped and it twisted an angle. And I mostly got it back in shape. But, all in all, it looks good. It was fun to do. It took me quite a while to complete it, not because necessarily it was a very long build. It was so-so. It was about the same as any other, give or take. But there were a lot of interruptions for me. Uh, it was a very interesting day. The instructions followed. They were easy to follow. It wasn't confusing. and didn't jump back and forth and leave you wondering. 
it was a little vague about folding some things. There was one instance, wasn't a big deal, but it has you fold up the sides and bottom on this back piece. And then later on, you have to put that little trim back door in there and you have to open up one of the pieces to get it in there. There were definitely some parts on here that were more challenging than I expected. Doing all these little wheels is time consuming. But getting this bottom piece, once you've got it together, attached to the body was very difficult. It was very surprising how much it did not want to come together. But all in all, this is a fun kit. I enjoy doing it, and I look forward to doing more kits. Um, I just heard that there's a possibility of Marvel kits coming out, which will be very interesting. Um, I've heard tales that they're coming out with more Star Wars. I look forward to that. And definitely the Transformers is coming out. In the meantime, I'm going to try and work on other kits. And if you have anything you would like to see me build, let me know in the comments down below. And I will try to work it in. I can't promise that I'll do it. But if I have the time and, and a little extra money, I'll grab the kit. I'll put it together and add it to my collection and make a video for you. Otherwise, if you have any other questions or comments, also leave them down below. I thank you for watching. And keep on keep it on. If you have a kit that you'd like to see me build, leave it in the comments down below and I'll see if I can't work that in for you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.